Good morning, folks. Why the media is now choosing to share Stephen Goddard's proof is beyond me. Those in the know have seen him prove that the U.S. government has been faking and fraudulently modifying the temperature data a number of times. I suppose this is just the tipping point, where the bullying of skeptics, the censoring of papers, the losses of funding or employment, and even the issuance of death threats by the global warming propagandists meets the cold hard facts on temperature. If this is new to you, here's the quick version. Even I was the kind of guy to call someone a denier not long ago tell you it's settled science. But when 10, 15, 20 years of pitifully failing climate projections rang the call for tweaking the models, anyone who tried to do so got lambasted for not falling in line. I am embarrassed to have ever been on that side of things, and for years now I've sought to right that wrong. Stephen Goddard is of course the man behind the Real Science website. Check him out, and if you haven't seen the climate change playlist on our channel homepage, it should be about all the proof you need. By the way, part two of Dr. Lau's interview is out, and it is pretty on point for the current discussion on just how the climate works. Shorthand name for this pathogen, Chick V. It's not deadly, but it's popping up all over the place, mostly associated with visitors to Haiti. It'll ruin your weekend, I'll promise that. A series of giant wave impacts have pounded isolated sections of the Thailand coastline with some structures suffering major damage. These were due to the monsoon. Final article, this is now the second cold star they have found. This one essentially a giant diamond, it's so cold. Chapter 5 of Star Water series comes out July 1 on suspiciousobservers.org. I understand the trailing convergence over southeast Australia was more gruesome than the lead over New Zealand. We'll keep that in mind as these are now popping in series one behind the other and could continue the strong winter conditions after that little break you guys just had. Europe? There's the flood makers to the south we mentioned yesterday. Hopefully your areas are all right. Also, the convergence about to spin up to the UK and Ireland has an odd shape and form to her. Nevertheless, it should produce some significant weather for the islands. United States, two watches once more. We have a weak low over Ohio and Pennsylvania that could bring some heavy rain up through New England tonight. Meanwhile, the northern flow will again set up severe weather on the eastern edge of the Rockies. Solar wind? Drop below 300 kilometers per second briefly. Weak sauce, folks, and we have geomagnetic calm. We don't expect much to change soon either, with the lone eruption for days now seen going mostly south and appearing to come from the backside anyway. Solar flaring? Not making it happen either. The sunspots aren't complexing, and the separation remains. I am rooting for that little blue positive spot behind the lead up north. As you can see, we'll soon have more sunspots to investigate. Their bright umbral fields are easily visible cresting the limb now. The only things I have to say about the coronal fields of the sun the last day is that this is pretty indicative that the reversal is not yet complete. It's a little freaky as well. Meanwhile, the coronal hole force on the equator is pretty weak, but the incoming polar extensions come from a powerful southern opening. In 211 angstroms, you should be able to see that extension swinging up and in from the bottom left. Folks, the Mobile Observatory is in Hershey, Pennsylvania at their famed campgrounds. Already had a few observers stop by last night, but we're here another day, so come say hello, talk observer, we'll have a good time. But first, shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.